There are nine men and women running to be the leader of the Liberal Party of Canada. Three of them, as we mentioned, from the province of Quebec. And one of those is former MP and former Justice Minister Martin Couchon, joining us as well, also from Montreal. Um, great, to, great to have you on the show, Martin. Let me, I, I have to start from this premise. If I was a supporter or a member of the party, I'm, I'm thinking about who to vote for. I look at the last general election. You ran in Outremont. In, that's a riding you held before. And it wasn't close. You got 9,000 votes, and you were up against then the only NDP MP for the party. That was Thomas Mulcair. He got 22,000. Now you want to lead the Liberal Party and beat Thomas Mulcair, now the leader of the NDP, all across the country. I mean, more than that, the day I'll be leader of the party, I'm going to run in uh, where I was born, in the riding of Charlevoix, which is in uh, eastern Quebec. So I'm going to bring the party back really in the, uh, in the province of Quebec. And you remember very well, and, and when you speak to people, they know that I'm still very strong in the province of Quebec. And more than that, last election, you know, being an NDP, you, can spend, you could spend two weeks on vacations in the United States and get elected anyway. You could spend the whole campaign without, uh, without going to your writing and get elected anyway. So people know very well that it was an amazing, unique circumstances. And as well, there was a wave that we, uh, we've never seen before. That wave is not there anymore. So the task that we have as a, as a, as a party is really now to make sure that we're going to use this uh, process that we have, the leadership process, to start uh, coming back in the province of Quebec. And it is key. If we want to be, uh, we're going to be a national government, and to be a national government, uh, we need to be back in the province of Quebec. And this is a, one of my main missions, actually. And yet, that you're right, that orange wave swamped a whole lot of Bloc Québécois candidates and, and liberal ones as well. But as that orange wave was wiping you aside, next or just nearby, Justin Trudeau and Papineau actually increased his vote total in one. Mark Garneau, who you're competing against as well, he survived the orange wave, although he had his plurality reduced. So of the three candidates from Quebec, two did survive the orange wave. You were the only one who didn't. It's very interesting, and I like you mentioned that because those two were elected. So when you're in your writing full time and you work in your writing, it's totally different. Me, I was totally outside and I tried to come back in a writing that has, that has changed. And as well, I just would like to remind you that Mark Garneau, as you just mentioned, was in the writing of Westmount, seen as a very strong liberal seat. And he won by a very, very narrow margin. I mean, f just few votes. Mm -hmm. So you know what? I've lost next time, last time. People know very well because it was amazing circumstances and as well, it was a wave. And as I told you, I'm still very strong in the province of Quebec, know a lot of people, still have a very good network, and I'm going to bring my party back when I'll be leader, back in the province of Quebec. You better believe that. Uh, we just had Eric Duhame on a minute ago, and I was asking him uh, about the fact that last Sunday, when the, your first debate, and a lot of it, well, I think one third was held in French, in, in, in French language, so obviously the party is trying to reach out to French-speaking Canadians, and yet no uh, LCN or RDI did not carry the debate in Quebec. So beyond getting Quebecers excited about the Liberal Party of Canada, it seems to me it's going to be difficult, it is difficult right now to get Quebecers excited about the race you're in. I mean... Of course, I mean, th that, was, that was the first debate. Uh, the race has, uh, has just started, and we're going to have our debate in the province of Quebec as well. It will take place in, in Montreal. Uh, I'll be campaigning in the province of Quebec uh, for, for some weeks as well. That's, uh, as I said, it's a, it's a very important province for, for the party and, and as well for me. I, I just want to make sure we're going to bring the party back. But we have to make sure that during the debate, we will uh, find a way to, uh, to get back in Quebec with our policies as well. I believe... One of the problems that, that we have is that when people look at the, uh, the federal liberal, they see a party that, that stands basically for a Canada, Canada knows best type, uh, type of approach. A party that uh, basically don't, uh, don't respect the provinces and the territories. And of course, if you go back, go back in the previous government, uh, we have done some amazing things with the provinces, uh, like uh, just, uh, for example, the manpower agreement that we uh, signed, communication Canada agreement that we've signed as well. But we need to do more than that, and we need to tell people that basically we will respect the spirit of the Canadian Federation, and the spirit of the Canadian Federation is to work all together as a family, work in cooperation, and, as, and respect as well all the provinces. And not be afraid to speak. What, you know, people are afraid when we mention the term asymmetrical, like Paul Martin did with the last, the last health care agreement. You know what? There's a, a asymmetrical uh, dimension in all our constitution, actually. So that is the spirit of our Canadian Federation. And we need to tell people in the province of Quebec and across Canada that, that this is exactly where, where we are 
uh, as a party and that way I believe in making sure as well that we have nice policies in terms of economic development, in terms of the, uh, the culture. But culture is key in Quebec and it's key across Canada. So we have to make the demonstration. It's going to be an important part of our policies. When I look at Harper... Uh, Martin, hold it, just because, because we only have about a minute bit, bit left. I do, I do want to ask about a big issue today in Ottawa, and that is this uh, idle no more, Chief Theresa Spence and the Aboriginal issues. Because there was the interim leader today of your party, Bob Ray, signing this document, a commitment, a bunch of declarations, among other things, saying that the Liberal Party, which he will not lead in a couple of months, uh, would put all legislation to First Nations that impact them in any way, shape, or form. Do you think it was appropriate for the interim leader to make that commitment, noting that the opposition leader, Tom Mulcair, was not at that press conference today? I mean, what, 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 what he did essentially respect what I call the, uh, the, uh, the spirit and the philosophy of our party. Um, the problem that we have now is that we need to engage with the First Nations, we need to sit with them, we need to establish cooperation with the First Nations, and yet the government that's there now, it's not, they are not credible at all with the First Nations. So we need a government in place that will be credible to them. And go back to, for example, exactly what Paul Martin did, the Kelowna type of, uh, of accord, whereby you're talking about, about economic development, education, training, making sure that we're going to give them the power to develop their community. And, and you know what? When you look at the First Nation today, there's a new generation coming up, taking place, very well educated and very capable people. So we need to trust them, support them and work with them. Martin Cochon, thank you so much for joining us. And let's have you back on to talk a little more about your policies. Really appreciate you being here tonight. Thanks a lot. Bye.